Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Check. Testing. Fish patties. <sighs> Hello. Testing. Um, Hello everybody and welcome to Henry's Kitchen. Uh, hopefully you can hear me. Um, where today we're going to be making Henry's famous fish patties. Um, can you hear me alright? Okay. Uh, my fish patties uh, walked their way into people's hearts on the 4th of July of 2019 um, when um, I made my uh, fish sticks actually and the difference between fish sticks and fish patties is a little subtle uh, the difference is that uh, with fish sticks you're using uh, fresh ingredients whereas today we're going to be using old bread uh, as our flour base and this is actually a good way to use old ingredients that you might have in your cupboard uh, if you have a can of tuna there uh, some old bread and some veggies lying around so, uh, without further ado, um, let's get into uh, some of the terminology here. Uh, the term fish patty originated in the 17th century as an English alteration of the French word pâté. According to the OED, it's related to the word pasty, which is various ingredients encased in a pastry. Uh, the term patty is used in many varieties of English, uh, but less frequently in Britain and Ireland than in the United States. Merriam-Webster defines it as a small flat cake or a chopped food. You could also call these fish cakes if you prefer. Uh, in Cambridge, as a piece of food, especially meat, formed into a thin circular shape and then usually cooked, which in today's case will be cooked, in some countries, patties are called discs. I feel like that could get confusing uh, with compact discs, uh, but you probably uh, at least can see that they're a similar shape. So let's talk about some of the ingredients that we're going to have. Oops. Okay, sorry. I went to the roast beef cam there. Um, Okay, uh, we had somebody ask what a CD is. A CD is a compact disc and it's a very modern way to get music. Uh, I'm sure that was probably an older person who remembers cassette tapes and records and eight tracks, but uh, the new way the kids are doing it now is using a compact disc, which is a digital technology that uses lasers. And um, you should check it out because it's, uh, there's no noise on, on the recordings that you're listening to. Okay. So uh, let's talk about some of the ingredients we're going to be using. Um, number one, we want our two slices of old bread. And it's uh, very important that you use old bread here. Uh, the French have a saying, pain perdu, which means lost bread. And that's where they came up with uh, French toast. Um, I also have some various herbs here that we're going to be using. I think this is cilantro and uh, a little bit of parsley. Um, got our can of tuna. One egg. Um, some olives. And uh, uh, actually the bread is, uh, it was, it's been frozen so it might not looks so bad but uh, it, it's certainly several months old 
Um, next thing that we're doing here is I've got green beans that I put into the microwave. And we're just going to go ahead and uh, open these up. This is going to be a very healthy dish also. It's got uh, fish, which is always good, and as well as it's got green beans, as you can see. This is very hot. Um, that's our green beans, and these are very healthy for you. Um, let's uh, talk about what our methodology is going to be here. Um, okay, step one is we want to take our bread. Uh, I'm going to move these green beans aside for a second. We want to take our bread and we want to put it into a bowl of water. Sorry. Um, right there. Sure you can see that. Uh, so we're going to take our two pieces of bread and we're literally going to dunk them in the water and we're going to leave them there until they get very, very soggy. This is going to act as our flour base. Uh, while we've got those soaking, let's go ahead and uh, start prepping our vegetables. Um, I'm going to start with some olives. These are called uh, Manzilla uh, olives. I had a question about what type of water I'm using. Uh, in this case, I have uh, just uh, some tap water. I'm not sure that you, use, that you need to use filtered, but you know, it's like they say, you know, when you go to a coffee, a really good coffee place, they will tell you that most of what you're drinking when you're drinking coffee is water. And if you're not using a good kind of water, then you might as well not be drinking coffee. Speaking of which, I have a, a bit of coffee I'm going to have here. And uh, it's very hot. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and cut our olives. I hope everybody's uh, getting their week uh, started off in a good way. Um, if you have a question now is a good time to ask because this is sort of a mindless activity. I'm not sure why there's red stuff in between these olives, but uh, as they say in America, whatever. Um, we're gonna make sort of an ingredient uh, bowl here. I'm probably going to make just a couple more olives. Um, they say you can't have too many olives unless you have a problem with sodium, in which case you should probably uh, switch to something less salty. Um, I don't have a problem with so sodium yet, but uh, it does happen as you get older. Let's see here. Okay, I think that should be enough. Uh, I had a question about um, whether or not you can um, replace the olives with other things. Absolutely, and uh, thanks for bringing that up. Um, there is... Uh, there are a lot of optional uh, items in this dish. You can swap out your olives for pickles, zucchini, cucumber, anything that is long and green. Uh, speaking of which, I'm going to add a little bit of our green beans into here. I'm going to do about the same proportion as I did there. Okay. I'm going to consult the directions. Always uh, look at the directions for all these things. Recently I was trying to open a um, a bit of uh, uh, medicine. It was uh, Imodium. 
which is something that you use if you have loose stools. Uh, I, I don't want to get too personal here, but um, I guess it's too late for that. But I couldn't get the thing open, and it turns out it was childproof. Um, they wanted you to fold over some part of it. And um, Okay, so let's consult the directions uh, this time. So we're soaking our bread in large shallow dish until softened completely. Um, we're going to be now uh, mixing, oh, okay, shit. I actually, uh, I, I might have done something uh, out of sequence here, which is okay. We're supposed to be pulling over our, uh, our hot plate. Sorry about that. Uh, I should have been looking at the directions. Um, this is our hot plate. We're going to crank this thing up to uh, all the way. Uh, it's actually a griddle, but uh, I'm using it as a hot plate. And I got to say, I already loved this, uh, this item, this uh, griddle. It's probably one of the coolest things that I have in my kitchen. Um, but when I found out that you could use it as a hot plate, uh, that pretty much just blew my mind. Um, we're going to let that heat a little bit. Um, a hot, once you have something that can be used as a hot plate in your kitchen, then you're opening up the doors to so many things like, uh, you know, boiling water, sauteing things, whatever. And when I found out that my griddle also operated as a hot plate, it was just a very exciting time. I guess it was a little bit like if you uh, got a girlfriend and um, you found out she also had a truck or something like that. But uh, that's uh, okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put a little bit of olive oil onto our skillet. Probably about a capful. And we're going to get that nice and hot. And it says we're supposed to put our ingredients in there. We're going to um, heat our herbs and our other various uh, greens. So I'm going to start tearing off some pieces of cilantro or parsley or whichever one this is and putting it in there. Um, this can be a little bit of a painstaking process, but it can also be a little bit uh, sort of therapeutic and it doesn't really matter if you get any stems I guess I'm trying to do it perfect because I'm trying to teach it but if you have if you're at home and you're not talented enough to put um, herbs in there without getting some stem in there that's perfectly all right once it cooks it's gonna uh, all sort of dissolve in there um, so I'm not gonna be too worried about it here we're just gonna go ahead and get a couple of stems in there. I've had nights where I've spent hours trying to get no stems in there and it's really not worth it at the end. But uh, unless you're cooking for a fancy restaurant or whatever. Okay, so now we're gonna grab a utensil and uh, start stirring this around a little bit. Getting it nice and hot. Now I'm going to add in our other greens. Okay, so we, we have some people um, that approve of uh, adding in the stems, and I'm glad to hear that. You know, we, we don't really uh, want anybody to get too uh, OCD about these types of things. Okay, so we're gonna let that cook. I think I'm gonna just check a couple of uh, steps ahead on our recipe. It's a little bit like playing chess where you wanna think a couple of steps ahead to make sure that you don't um, do something wrong. So uh, here we go. So we've got our olive oil in a nonstick skillet over a medium heat. And uh, we're gonna uh, cook that and we're gonna stir it for about five minutes. Um, what we're gonna be doing after that is we're gonna mix this mixture 
with our softened bread in a large bowl. So um, that's the next step. Uh, why don't I put this aside and let's go to this other step uh, that involves uh, our bread. Okay, so it wants us to remove the dish. No, it wants us to remove our bread from dish and squeeze as much water from the bread as is possible. So it sounds like I'm going to need another plate for this. Um, so we're going to squeeze the water out of our bread. I guess it's a little bit like a dish sponge or something. Yeah, some people saying it looks tasty already. Well, wait till you get the, fo uh, the final product once we get our veggies in there. Okay, so I'm trying, it, you know, the recipe says uh, squeeze as much water as possible out of the bread. I don't personally like it when recipes uh, say that uh, you need to do as much as possible because really what is as much as possible? Do they want me to sit here for hours and get every single last drop of water out of these things? I guess so. Somebody asked if that water is drinkable. Um, I don't see any reason why you couldn't. It's really just bread and water with a little bit of a stem in there from some various uh, herb type situations. But uh, okay, there we go. So why don't we then take this bread and put it, um, I believe, into our bowl. Oh, looks like somebody's come to join us here. Okay, so. Um, sauteing. Wow. Uh, I haven't fed roast beef yet. As a matter of fact, neither of us have eaten all day. We're on this new uh, diet situation. Let's see if I can get a shot of... Uh... Um, anyway, okay. So, uh, let's put our bread water aside. I don't know if we're going to be needing that bread water later. So the next thing that we want to do, you can use uh, that bread water to water your plants. I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, this is actually coming out quite nice. I don't know if you can see that, but we're going to let that cook again for five minutes. Okay, so we're going to mix that mixture with our softened bread our green beans. Okay, now we're going to start uh, doing our tuna here. Uh, some people are uh, asking for common. I can uh, certainly add spice. Shit, hold on. This is a sort of a newfangled uh, can opening situation which doesn't always work the way that you want it to. You can really smell those veggies. This thing's great because it holds on to your um, can after it's done. Hold on a sec. Uh, probably going to have to feed the cat at some point. Now I'm having a problem removing the can opener from the fucking can. Okay. Go ahead and dump this. They're always trying to improve technology and they wind up making it more difficult and less good. Okay. 
And we've got there uh, some bread, tuna, what other things that do we have to have? Mix the parsley mixture with the softened bread, tuna, green beans, eggs. We're gonna do an egg. Uh, somebody asked if I could have used uh, the tuna water to soak my bread, and you're absolutely right. That's uh, That kind of goes back to that cooking as a chess game type thing. Because uh, if I would have thought about the fact that I was gonna have water already, I probably would have just gone ahead and done that. So, um, all right. Let's uh, continue on here. I want to make sure that you can see this. Okay. Um, okay. I'm going to just put this in here. All right, we're starting to get quite the mixture here. I might need a slightly smaller utensil and a larger bowl, but um, let's see what else we've got here. Um, oh, I, I'm not gonna be using cumin, I'm gonna be using herbs de Provence, um, which is uh, herbs from the provinces. So green beans, we've got our one egg in there. We've got our olives, salt and pepper, herbs de Provence. So let me grab that. Um, okay, here it is. This is called herbs de Provence. And I'm not sure what is in there. In fact, nobody really knows for sure. It's a little bit of a mystery but it sure does make things delicious. Um, gonna use a fork, I guess. And we're just gonna go ahead and stir this up. Uh, so let's stir it up. I don't know if you're following along at home, uh, what stage you're at, but as you can see, there's a lot of different options when it comes to ingredients in this dish. You can swap out again. Uh, somebody said pickles, but you could do uh, zucchini. Um, you could do cucumber. Uh, someone asked a question about uh, whether or not this was uh, similar to cat food, and the answer is yes. Uh, tuna is very well liked by uh, cats. Uh, which is probably why we're getting um, roast beef hovering around us like this because he probably smells it. Also because I haven't fed him this morning because we're going on this keto diet thing. Um, yeah, somebody asked me, uh, this is a good technical question. I wanted to post the ingredients for this beforehand. I don't really know where to do that unless I did it on my Twitter. But uh, if somebody has a comment about where they'd like to see the ingredients beforehand, um, I, maybe I'm not good enough at Twitch or maybe it's a flaw with the Twitch technology and I'll have to call them and, uh, and see if maybe I could bring this to their attention. But I would like you guys to be following along at home. Uh, so let me know if you have any ideas of how I can post the is there a, something on the bio? Like, do you do it in the bio or whatever? Um, yeah. But I think the idea is to do it channel panel. Okay, I'm going to have to look that up. Yeah, that's a good suggestion. And... Um, And uh, I appreciate it. Remember. Oh, uh, somebody mentioned Discord. You know what? Discord is probably the best thing. That's the best way to do it. That's what we're going to do because there is a Henry's Kitchen uh, Discord. Um, okay.
a lot of good ideas here. Um, with your permission though, uh, I'm going to read those later and I'm going to take care of it. Right now, this, what I'm doing here is requiring quite a bit of concentration. Um, so I want to make sure that I don't mess this up. Uh, I think we're just about ready to put these on the burner. Um, so let's take a look at our next uh, thing here. It says, um, okay. Uh, apparently there's some people who just joined us and uh, they want to know, um, you know, what's going on. Uh, I will tell you, it's uh, Henry's Famous Fish Patties. I've made something similar to this in 2019 on the 4th of July, 4th of July uh, Fish Franks. Um, fish Franks and Fish Patties are very similar. The only difference here is that we're taking uh, some of our old bread um, which was frozen so it wasn't that old, but you could take old bread and you can um, soak it in some uh, water for about five minutes and then squeeze the juices out and then that's going to act as your um, your dough based uh, ingredient. Okay, so just looking ahead here, the next thing that we're going to do, we've got our herbs de Provence, we've got um, We've basically got a dough and what we're going to do now is we're going to form these into uh, 24 thin palm sized patties. So I'm going to grab a, I guess for this I'll go ahead and grab one of these things and let's start making us some patties folks. So you literally just want to knead the dough a little bit. This is a little juicy and I'm not, I'm not sure why. Maybe I didn't spend enough time uh, doing my, um, uh, getting that water out of the bread, which could have been a possibility. Cooking isn't easy and if it was, then everybody would be doing it. Um, that's an old saying from Julia Child, who was a very famous chef. And okay, so as you can see here, I'm making patties. If you're just joining now, I'm making patties. Henry's famous fish patties. Um, I bought my tuna at the grocery store. You can buy yours anywhere. All right, so they said 24 patties. It looks like I'm only making about uh, seven of them. Well, six and a half, really. I'm not sure why that is. Okay. Um, I'm being told that it looks uh, moist and juicy, and I appreciate that. Right, that sounds like a compliment if I've ever heard one. Um, so we have a very chill uh, cat in the background, I can see. He's uh, definitely wanting to get him some of that fish patty. I don't know that this is appropriate to uh, feed to your cat, so maybe hold off if you're thinking of doing that. But let's go ahead and go to the most important step, which is going to be putting our patties onto our hot plate. Um, in this case, Uh, question about whether you could use chicken instead of fish to do what I'm doing here absolutely not that just wouldn't work and uh, I, I don't uh, I don't approve of that question I'm gonna um, I had a question about if this is better uh, than the ones uh, that they serve at McDonald's actually these are very similar I believe that they make them in a very similar process um, okay, so let's go ahead and put our fish patties down. I'm just going to scoop them up. Uh, 
Uh, got some people saying they don't like the apron because it's too dirty. Look, if you don't have a dirty apron, you're not doing it right. Uh, it's going to get dirty. The cooking is a very messy business. Uh, I'm also going to be able to use some of this griddle surface. Um, I uh, probably am due for a new apron though. This has literally been about, uh, it's been about 11 years since I've cleaned it, so it might be due. That's not a bad point. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and leave those on there for a little bit. Um, let's see how long it says. Uh, stage four. Stage four says um, cook the patties. Heap one uh, tablespoon of olive oil on a large skillet. Okay. I did not put olive oil down on this. Um, I don't know that we need it. We did have olive oil on there from the previous uh, sauteing, but we're basically cooking these patties in the skillet until they're cooked through. So it's going to be about three minutes on each side. So maybe now uh, that we have to kill a little time uh, would be a good time to do um, Maybe to do a little musical number. Does anybody want to hear a song? I've got my guitar. Um, sometimes it's fun to just uh, just make up songs uh, in the moment. Um, why don't we do this song uh, about fish patties? I like to make fish patties I think that they're good Won't you help me make fish patties I think that you should I like to make fish patties I think that's understood fish patties I really hope that you would that could be a hit um, had a request for this uh, old standby um, this is a song that I wrote during a very very dark time in my life but I discovered cooking and everything changed after that. Help me make it through the night Cause I am tired Somebody said that they played this song at their wedding, which is very cool. I think that's awesome. Um, I wouldn't expect that. I think this is more uh, one of those songs that you play years later after the marriage is over and you're looking at pictures of the wedding while you're drinking a bottle of uh, some alcohol of your choice. I guess I'm just not interesting. I have no personality I met a guy who had cancer He felt sorry for me I'm always coming in last place And getting dirt kicked in my face And I guess that's just the way it's meant to be Uh oh, I just remembered we should be switching the side of our thing here 
top. I want to flip these over. Uh, I think it might have been a problem that I didn't uh, use any olive oil on this, and I might live to regret that. But uh, not only is this cooking where a lot of things go wrong. Oh, I'm getting some encouraging uh, notes from people. Okay, the ones on the griddle are looking much better for some reason. So it might have something to do with the surface that I'm using there. Um, let's go back to uh, some music. Um, so we've done a couple of songs for you there. Uh, maybe I can uh, try to fake my way through one more if you guys... Uh, West Virginia by Train. I don't know that song. Um, I wish I did, I'm sorry. Uh, I think there is a song by John Denver that says, Take me home, country roads, to the place I belong. West Virginia, mountain mama, take me home. That's an okay one. It doesn't have anything to do with cooking. Uh, someone mentioned... Uh, Freeber. Um, I'm as free as a bird now. I went into some other song there, but uh, okay. Well, I, I think these are just about ready here. Let's go ahead. Uh, see how we're doing here. Um, can you guys hear me okay? Um, okay. All right. Um, uh, somebody asked about a donation button. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, I, uh, I, I probably should start doing that. Uh, I have a feeling... Um, I'll be twitching for the rest of my life here, so I'm, I'm going to have uh, a lot of a learning curve to go here. So if you keep watching, uh, you'll find that I get better and better at it, and I've also had some great help from people that I'm going to be giving a special thanks to during this episode. Uh, this is not working out. The one that's on the pan is just flat out not working out. But these patties seem to be doing pretty well. They're maintaining a consistency, sticking together. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our patties from the pan and I'm gonna move this over here and I'm hoping that I can save this. Um, I actually am not somebody who really minds when bad things happen in the kitchen. That's going to be difficult to clean, by the way. And I want to address that. Um, here's the thing. I've been cooking for many, many years. Um, I've been asked to cook uh, for various functions. Um, usually just one time and then I uh, get asked by somebody who hasn't uh, ever met me before. Um, but I do cook uh, fairly professionally and uh, I've been cooking it on YouTube for many years and when you see me screw up, what I'm hoping is that it gives you the confidence to know that it's like, wow, this guy is some famous cook and he screws up. Maybe I'm not such an awful person and maybe it'll make you feel better to see that uh, that even the pros sometimes will forget to put olive oil in the pan for example and or in this case it said it was supposed to be a non-stick pan and I don't know if that's what that was exactly but it sure did stick um, you know I, I 
you have to read the directions. You have to read the directions. Um, and uh, make sure that you learn from your lessons, you know. Uh, like, for example, when I made my fish sticks uh, a couple of years ago, I seem to recall that I put them on my um, grill, on the barbecue grill uh, grate, where the fish was falling through the grill, and I guess I thought that they were going to stay together more. Uh, that was a huge problem. As you can see, I didn't make that mistake this time because I learned. And next time I make a fish-based uh, patty or frank, I'm going to make sure that, uh, that I use olive oil when I set the patties down. Let's see how these are doing. Um, okay. Yeah, no, it's just simply not behaving and it's unfortunate. I'm even thinking maybe the best idea would be to just make one giant patty out of these. Uh, someone uh, asked if I would ever run for office or for president of the United States or maybe any any country that would be willing to have me. Um, sure, uh, I, you know, I think that that would be, uh, you know, hey, as long as I can cook, I'd be good with it. Um, Okay, so what we're gonna do, we've got three patties that have worked out very nicely. And I'm gonna try to make a nice presentation when I plate that. Um, let's... Okay, so for anybody who's just joining us right now, what we're doing is we're making fish patties and what we did was we took some bread, soaked it, squeezed it, got all that water out. Then we put uh, a mixture of tuna and various other herbs and veggies and made it into a dough. We forgot to put olive oil on the no-stick pan so it stuck. And um, now we've got basically three patties that were on the grill that are looking pretty damn good, but we have a bunch of other stuff that we're going to try to salvage into one full patty. So here we go. I'm going to, uh, we're done with the griddle here. The griddle behaved very well and that's uh, certainly something to be thankful for. I'm going to move this over. It's going to be very hot. Uh, it's not so bad, I guess. And uh, I've got a plate here. Plating is one of the most important parts of this. Somebody asked uh, if this recipe is in my cookbook. There's Henry's Kitchen Cookbook, Volume 1 and Volume 2. I believe in Volume 2 I do my fish franks, and fish franks and the fish uh, patties are very similar. The only difference is that patties are a round disc type uh, shape whereas a franc is more of an elongated uh, obelisk. Okay, so here we have fish patties. So somebody asked where roast beef is, and I'm a little concerned. He was there for a little while uh, cleaning himself. Let's check in on the roast beef cam. Uh, okay, yeah, he's still doing basically the same thing there. So it's really kind of all all he does. All right, well, uh, when these, uh, okay, these patties we're gonna put aside. These came out perfect. You can't get a better patty than that. That's, that's pretty damn good. Um, this, on the other hand, is a little bit of a problem. So now we're gonna do a little bit of improvisation. I'm gonna go ahead and eat this. Um, uh, somebody asked about sauce. Yes, I'm going to be putting a mayonnaise tartar sauce on this when I'm finished. Um, but let's go ahead and uh, basically patify this mixture. It's actually working out pretty nicely. Uh, 
little bit of extra here. I don't know if I'm gonna use that, but uh, yeah. This is good. All right, let's put the little one in the middle. Um, someone asked if you could deep fry these. Uh, I suppose, uh, I don't know if you really need to because we already kind of fried them anyway. Um, but here they are. They're certainly uh, not um, what you would call symmetrical, but uh, that's one of the ways that you know that what you're making is real and then I mean how would you guys know that I didn't maybe buy these from McDonald's or something and try to pass them off as something that I was cooking myself um, okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take them off the paper towel now that they've cooled a little bit And we're going to start dressing it up with a little bit of our uh, mayonnaise mixture, which uh, not really seeing here, but uh, that's what, you know what I've got? I've got a little bit of gray poupon, which is a very fancy type of mustard. And I think that that's going to go pretty well. Uh, I'm almost out of it, but we're going to use whatever we have left here. And we're just going to do a little scoop. It's nice that it actually is the same color as the patty, so that's, that's always a nice thing because you're not shocking everybody with different colored types of foods. But... Uh, I don't know. I think that's probably good. Okay. Well, here we go. Um, for people out there that want to see what the professional one looks like, this is uh, Henry's fish patties. Uh, I'm putting some old ingredients uh, to use with just simply some bread, uh, whatever veggies you have lying around, and a can of tuna. Um, I have Grey Poupon, which is a particularly fancy type of mustard, but I would imagine that you'd be able to use one of the more um, lower uh, types of uh, mustard. But uh, let's go ahead and see how these babies taste. Well, um, I can definitely taste the tuna. It's very fishy and the green beans make it um, feel like you're eating something with a more of a healthy consistency, which is nice. Probably could have used a little bit more herbs de Provence. But Overall, I'm going to say that this was a pretty, pretty much a success. Um, so let's just review what we did here. Let's put it under. Um, what we did here today was that we took uh, some old bread, dunked it in water, wringed it out, threw in some microwave green beans and whatever other veggies we had on hand, olives, but you can um, be creative with that. Um, we churned it out into a dough. Uh, by hand, we put it into patty form and we laid it down on the skillet and on the griddle. The griddle wound up being more successful. And then we um, answered some questions. We did some songs. And then uh, we took our patties off and plated them on a plate and uh, added a little bit of Grey Poupon. And we came up with uh, a delicacy that um, would probably make just about anybody salivate.
and I'm particularly proud of this one. It's, uh, it's Henry's famous fish patties. So, everybody, um, uh, I want to say thank you very much for um, for uh, joining us today. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. Very important part of this is that I want to say a special thank you to a lot of the people that have been helping me uh, so much. Uh, to the moderators, moderators, uh, Dingo Bob, Fawcan, Dom Beef, Hottest Bear, Do Dingle, Doug Goggy, Doctor Flanges. And uh, honorary mention to Bakus, Daisy Blossom, Melon95, and Pilskman. Um, I always like to thank Nim because Nim uh, gave me my start here on Twitch. Um, along with uh, some very supportive people. Bumble Vision, who I met recently. Uh, the LGX. Um, uh, Bill Larkin, who's uh, my friend uh, on here from years ago. And he does amazing music. And also Forson, although I've never met Forson, but uh, he uh, has uh, sent a lot of people my way too. And uh, most of all, though, I want to thank you, the people who um, are watching at home and uh, eating, uh oh, uh, and are eating uh, this food. So um, thank you, everybody. And uh, my next uh, stream is going to be at noon on Sunday, and I am going to, uh, in my Discord, maybe we could uh, post a link to the Discord, I'm going to be uh, posting the ingredients the day before so that everybody can follow along. So, bon appetit.